You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what is going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be talking about something we talked about recently on the show, John Calipari and the Texas Longhorns. Some more information has come out since that conversation that you and I had, and I want to kind of dive back into it because now there's a little bit more smoke where there we thought there was absolutely nothing going on. We're also going to talk about Kentucky basketball's loss to Alabama. Uh, not a whole lot to take away other than the fact that the Wildcats are just kind of are what they are, but I think there are some interesting things that could be coming up for them. And then finally, Tavion Robinson's back, wide receiver for the Kentucky Wildcats. I think that's big. Going to explain why later on in the show. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you're watching on YouTube, it would mean a ton if you subscribed to the show. So last time you and I spoke, we talked about John Calipari uh, potentially being contacted by the Texas Longhorns. Their job just came open. They just fired their head coach, Chris Beard, after a domestic violence, violence charge against his fiance. Uh, really weird stuff going on with the Longhorns right now as far as like where they want to be. Obviously, they're a top 15 team still right now, and they've got a lot in front of them this year, and it looks like they're going to let their interim coach kind of ride things out, and he honestly may end up being, he, he may up being the guy that gets the job. But you and I discussed that Sports Illustrated, ESPN, CBS Sports, a lot of major outlets out there had John Calipari as a potential candidate for this Kentucky basketball squad to be their next head coach. And uh, you and I noted that, you know, it's probably not the best idea for Kentucky right now to be looking to get rid of John Calipari for a variety of reasons, some of which actually we didn't discuss that we're going to get into today. And I came away from that saying... Do I think John Calipari is going to be fired? No. Do I think that Texas is going to contact him? At the time, I said, I don't know. I said that they would probably be wise to, to be honest with you. And sure enough, today, Travis Branham of 24-7 Sports, if you don't know him, he's he's a national college basketball analyst for them. Uh, About four hours ago on the Horns 24-7, yeah, the Horns 24-7 Sports message, uh, message page i'm completely blanking on what this message board i'm such a moron uh he posted and said hey everybody i just want to pass along a small note as what begins probably a month-long process of texas figuring out its future as it relates to its next basketball coach i noted kentucky's john calipari as a name to watch on eric bossy's list of candidates and a source told me that texas has contacted calipari already through back channels I figure this will be denied on both sides. I live in Lexington and can tell you that the vibes aren't great now between Kentucky, the admin, fans, boosters, and Cal. I do suspect that if a competitive offer is made, then Cal would likely jump at it. So there you are. Ladies and gentlemen, John Calipari has been contacted by Texas, and according to Branham, if they were to give him a legitimate offer, he would probably move on it. Now, you and I talked yesterday, and well, not yesterday, last episode, about the fact that there is some contingency between the Wildcats fan base and Cal. There are a lot of people out there that are really frustrated with the way that he's performed over these past three years specifically. The fact that he's not gotten back to the Final Four in quite some time, the fact that he's only had one national title, and that was over a decade ago, I've said this quite a few times on this show. I don't think that there are a lot of people in college basketball that have done less with more. And what I mean by that is all of the recruiting he's done has essentially led up to nothing for quite some time now. Uh, And I just don't know what he's going to be able to do to kind of prove that he's capable of making a legitimate push at a national title over the next few years, except what have we been talking about this summer? We've been talking a lot about the fact that Cal Party has one of his best recruiting classes ever coming in, and he needs to have one more season to make a legitimate run at a national title before we start to have legitimate concerns. Now, obviously, things are kind of moving right now at a pace where I didn't even expect them to move 
just on Friday whenever I cord- recorded this episode. But I, I don't know. It's all just so weird to me. I can't sit here and say, oh, yeah, I think Cal's leaving because, again, we don't know anything. Outside of what Travis Branham has put forth, we don't know what the Wildcats are going to do. So right now, I just it, we're in a weird state of limbo where you start to look at, okay, what is this the purpose of this season? If you're a Kentucky fan, which is who we are on this podcast, what is the purpose of this season? What are we doing right now to kind of guide things toward a successful year? And to be honest with you, if he's legitimately, not him, his reps, if he's legitimately considering taking this co- coaching job at Texas 15 games into the year, he's not plugged in. He's not plugged into what's going on this year. I think a lot of us probably could have told it, told that uh, given what happened, I think, early on in the non-con slate. I just, it's all so, it's all so strange to me that this is all happening at once. I, I genuinely didn't expect the Wildcats to have to be looking potentially for another head coach next year. A couple of points I want to make on both sides. Yes, I understand that there are frustrations with the fan base right now, and yes, I understand the fact that he's not been able to produce to the level of expectation that the fan base has. I also want to say that it's very difficult. I've said this probably a hundred times last year during the offseason. It is so difficult to win a national title because it's a one-game elimination tournament. In a field of 68, it's so difficult. Statistically, your odds are improbable to win that title consistently. If you would like to go back and look, there's a great YouTube video out. I believe it's SB Nation, it's John Boys, that put it out, t- saying the essentially the NCAA tournament is a losing machine. Would highly encourage you guys to go look at that video and to kind of gain some perspective on what Kentucky deals with year in and year out. But here's the thing. On the other side of that, and, and outside of defending Cal, He has gotten every single recruit just about that he's wanted. Not every single one, but just about every recruit that he's wanted to have. And he's not done a whole lot with them. Sure, he's produced NBA talent. Sure, Kentucky has half a million guards in the NBA right now that are playing very well. I can think of quite a few right now that are playing excellently for the Wildcats. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for Kentucky basketball. So there's definitely two sides to this coin. There's definitely an argument to be made in both directions. The final thing I will say, and this is what I wanted to get out a few minutes ago. A lot of people have pointed this out on social media, friends of mine. Where does the recruiting go once Cal leaves? It goes with him. So this next year's class, if Kentucky were to make a move or Cal left himself, if he were to make the decision to leave, then it would go with him. That class is gone. So whoever Kentucky brings in has to be one really darn good recruiter in order to kind of reestablish things and then also get the program to where the fan base expects it to be. Not just the fan base also, but apparently the boosters and the athletic department, they need more out of Cal. And so far, over these past couple of years, things have kind of started to taper off. And... If the recruiting goes and the coaching goes, I don't know. I'm just concerned. I'm concerned about everything potentially and falling apart if Cal were to leave. But to be honest with you, where's the where's the program going right now? I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to talk about this Kentucky basketball loss to Alabama and kind of look towards, okay, well, what is the purpose of this year? What could be the purpose of this season for the Wildcats? Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with, and that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates with more efficient uh, numbers here by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, experiences. They can all help you achieve your goals, and LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster, and it's all for Free. And it's incredibly easy to create a free job post. If we've talked about it here on the show before. You can add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. Spread the word that you're hiring quickly. They have simple tools like screening questions that make it really easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire again as 2023 gets underway. It's really important that you identify the right team members to hire 
and LinkedIn can help you find them. And it's really simple. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That is linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, continuing along here on the Monday edition of Locked On, Kentucky Lance Daw hanging out here with you. Apologize that the episode is late, first of all. But second of all, if you've noticed and you're watching on YouTube, got a little bit of a different camera set up. I'm using a different computer today. It's all just a little bit different for me today. So apologize, apologies if anything is off with the recording. If you would do so as you're watching on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe. It would mean a ton to us here at Locked On Kentucky. Also, thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out our new podcast, the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. It's everything you need to know about college basketball all in one place. Isaac Shade, Andy Patton, they'll have you covered. They hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, players, me. I hop on there sometimes, talk a little ball, obviously, Kentucky as well. It's really, really great stuff. I would highly encourage you to go, to, to go check out the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. Andy Patton, Isaac Shade, available on YouTube and wherever you you get your podcast. Kentucky basketball took a fat loss to Alabama this weekend. I said on Twitter and I said on this show, I think Kentucky's going to win this game for a couple of reasons. I ended up being wrong about, I think about two or three or about a dozen of them. One specifically being Oscar Sheepway and how he would play in this game. Now I noted that Charles Bediaco had his way against Oscar Sheepway in Kentucky early in the matchup in Tuscaloosa last year. I pointed that out. I said offensively, he was efficient. He might have not missed from the floor, but he only had like 12 points. He was good. I was curious how much Betty Aka would play considering his minutes had taken a little bit of a dip this year. Well, he ended up playing nine, or excuse me, 29. He had nine points, was four or six from the floor, had six rebounds, two assists, two blocks, and essentially what did what Alabama needed him to do on the interior, which is defend the rim and shut down Oscar Shibwe. Shibwe, on the other hand, finished with four points. And I need to go pull up his game logs, but I don't think Shibwe has had a game for the for the for the for the Wildcats where he had less than four points. I mean, I, I, I'm going back and looking right now. He had he had zero points in the game against Ohio on November 19th last year, but he didn't play a whole lot. I think a part of it had to do with injury. He was 0-3 from the floor. So this is his second worst game of his Kentucky career. 23 minutes, Kentucky had to pull him. It's so It was so bizarre. Everything going on with the Wildcats right now is just so bizarre to me. Things are just kind of, I don't want to say falling apart, but dramatically trending in the wrong direction. It was so apparent early that what Alabama wanted to do, if you listen to the show, you would know what do the, Wild, or what do the, what do the Crimson Tide like to do. They are 100% a like twos, love threes mentality, but we noted their offensive philosophy revolves around getting to the rim first, and if they can't find a shot, they drive and kick. Well, they elected to get to the rim first aggressively in this game, and they ended up coming away with quite a few points from Brandon Miller, Mark Sears, Javon Quinterly. Uh, all were able to get to the rim and finish pretty effectively. Uh, the three-point shot did not fall at near uh, as efficient of a rate as it normally does in the first half. In the second half, though, they started shooting lights out, finished the game, I think, shooting like 37% from three, 36% from three. It was just, um, it was no, no, other, no other way to put it. It was just domination. Alabama beat the snot out of Kentucky. For the first time in a while, Kentucky, unranked, took a blowout loss on the road to a top 10 team. And just they just didn't look Right. They didn't look coherent. They look lost. Every single player out there had some sort of issue. Outside of Severe Wheeler, who, to be honest with you, played pretty darn good. He's shooting 39% from three, by the way, something I did not know. Uh, so I'm going to stop talking about him as a shooter uh, this, year, this year. Seven of 16 in this game at 15 points. Only had three assists to one turnover. Alabama shut him down. Kentucky had seven assists on the day. They had 52 points in ter- total. And the weird thing about it is, neither of these teams turned the ball over much. I mean, last year, this was a sloppy game. This year, they cleaned it up, and Kentucky was the one left in the dirt. It was embarrassing. Antonio Reeves came off the bench. He had 20 points in 21 minutes of action. Four of seven from three. Kentucky really needed him to get going. 
He made four of Kentucky's five threes on the day. Toppin made one, but he was one of ten from the floor. We needed Jacob Toppin and Oscar Shibway to play well in this game, and they played pitifully. There's no other way to put it. Kentucky weirdly out-rebounded Alabama in this game. But outside of that, it was statistical domination from the Crimson Tide and just about every other statistical category. Again, the freshman for, for Alabama, Brandon Miller, popped off 19 points, 7 rebounds. He had a steal, a block. He was 7 of 15 from the floor, 2 of 6 from 3. I mean, there's nothing really else I can say other than the fact that I'm proud that Kentucky kept this close for about 15 minutes. I believe at the like like literally with five minutes left, Kentucky was down by one or two in the first half, and then Alabama just grew the lead to eleven at halftime, and then they slowly proceeded to just widen the gap as things went on. Kentucky missed a lot of shots in the lane; they missed a lot of shots in the paint. That's not going to work if you're trying to win games. I don't really know what to say. I don't know what to to do to kind of take away from this to kind of be positive here for a second. The starters didn't play well at all. They played pitifully. The bench didn't really play well at all. Onyenzo missed both his shots. Damian Collins got caught a couple different times in bad spots defensively, although he did play really hard. I'll give them that. They did play hard for about 25 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't know. Kentucky's coaching staff obviously doesn't know how to run these guys offensively. They clearly don't know how to fix things on the defensive end of the floor. And that's just kind of it. That's where we're at right now. We've just got to learn to accept that this is where Kentucky basketball is at. And until things change, I don't know. I don't know. I'm at a loss for words almost with this one, guys. It's it's just an embarrassing time for Kentucky. And moving forward, I mean, you've got South Carolina and Tennessee you got a little bit of reprieve, but I would not be shocked if more starts to build up over these next couple days about John Calipari in Texas. This team comes in distracted and they lose to South Carolina. They're not, they're not beating Tennessee. And I don't know what they're going to do for the rest of the year, but they've got Kansas, they've got Arkansas, they've still got to play Florida. They've got to play Tennessee again. They've got to play Auburn you got to play Mississippi State on the road. I mean, there's just not a whole lot of opportunity here that Kentucky right now I feel like could take advantage of. Now, there is opportunity. Don't get me wrong. There is opportunity, but it's just they, 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 don't, they don't look cohesive. They don't look good on the offensive end at all. There's not a whole lot to write home about schematically. And the players are not giving a whole lot of effort, it seems like. And we talked about the importance of mental toughness. Doesn't really look like it's there. I mean, I don't know. We move along. To a more positive subject, I would say, with Tavion Robinson coming back, it's going to be big for the Wildcats, I think, with this Liam Cohen offense. You talk about the, the transition here with Kentucky basketball and football. It's just wild to me. It's just wild. Hey, before we get to that conversation about Tavion Robinson, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at BetOnline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football, national championships actually coming up tonight. You've got, obviously, college basketball, NBA. The playoffs for the NFL are going to be really exciting. They've got it all over there at BetOnline.net and If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action that is BetOnline where the game starts. All right, wrapping up the Monday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Daw hanging out here with you. Davian Robinson is coming back for the Kentucky Wildcats. He announced on social media today that's going to be huge for this receiving core for a couple of reasons. Number one, Liam Cohen. As we have discussed on this show recently when talking about the Wildcats and being excited about what this team could do next season with Devin Leary at the helm, it's all kind of come back to the fact that, well, schematically, things are going to be improved. I think a lot of what Kentucky did this past year during their skid was because of the lack 
of good X's and O's on the offense, offensive side. Rich Scangarello just simply didn't get it done. The defense was where it was at. The defense made enough plays for Kentucky to win games. That game against Georgia to hold one of the nation's best offenses to 16 points, I mean, you've got to be able to find more offensive matchups like that. You can win those games. Kentucky has gotten to a point where you can win those games. So right now, I I need people to understand that while last year was a disappointment, things are transitioning, weirdly enough. And Kentucky right now as a football program is starting to elevate itself, I think, now that they've gotten some really solid pickups in the transfer portal. Tavon Robinson obviously being one. I apologize if I sound distracted. I'm, I've literally gotten five phone calls throughout this episode from four different people. Tavion Robinson for 497 yards, three touchdowns, 12.4 yards per catch. I mean, that's essentially kind of honestly about average what he's done over the course of his career if you take everything into account. But Liam Cohen, I think, is going to elevate this. The, the second reason I think that this is really big and this is really important for Kentucky is the experience. So Dane Key, Barry and Brown, two younger receivers for Kentucky. They're going to be sophomores this year. They need somebody there as a veteran guy to kind of help lead the group. And Robinson can be that guy. Devin Leary, Tavian Robinson, Barry and Brown, Dane Key. You're going to have a really exciting offense next year. If Kentucky wants to sling the ball around, they're going to be able to do it. So I'm very excited about that. If you've got any thoughts on anything to do with Coach Cal, with... Devin Leary with Liam Cohen with this receiving core. I mean, leave it in the YouTube comments below. Again, just want to reiterate if we head out here, it is a weird time to be a Kentucky football and basketball fan. It's strange to me. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. You can follow the show on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and God bless.